Hey guys, I don't know if you remember this computer or not, but um, a long time ago I did a series on um, doing a uh, file on web server, but I never really completed it and I wanted to um, finish it. Um, so there's that computer now. Um, I got it hooked up with a Cat5e network cable to our router, and then there's my dad's computer um, and I just wanted to make a little small video on some changes I've done to this and uh, other stuff like that Oops, let me put the chair here so it's basically the same old computer as it was um, I did add a few more things let me take the side panel off here I'm trying to do this one hand it isn't not easy Oh, come on. Why does this like that? There we go. Okay. So it's the same, basically the same hardware. There's um, same video card. Just an old little video card. Um, I did add another 512 megs of RAM, so it has 600 and something megabytes now. Um, and, but the major things that I've done to this is I added this uh, Adapt Tech SCSI controller card, and um, it's a 64-bit controller card, but you can put it in a 32-bit slot. Um, but there is going to be a little bit of overhang. Um, and I've added more hard drives. Um, I had I think, only one hard drive in it before. I added a 40 gigabyte. Um, IDE hard drive, and then a 128 gigabyte or 130 gigabyte um, SCSI hard drive up here. This is uh, I don't know. Is that the IBM desk? No, that's a uh, what do you call it? Seagate Cheetah 68, 63 pin um, SCSI. So I've got the scuzzy things there. I removed the, uh, so there's three hard drives in this. I removed the floppy drive and just left this open. So there's an air intake. And then I've also just unplugged the, uh, the CD drive. But what this is running now is it's running, um, instead of, I think it was Windows XP before, it's running uh, FreeNAS 8, which is a uh, free BSD based um, op operating system. Um, in order for it to work, you do have to have two hard drives, because um, one hard drive is going to be the installation media, and then the um, second hard drive is going to be your storage volume. So, I've got since there's the three drives in there, one I got one 20 gig, which is the middle one, which is the um, one that actually is is the one where it's installed on, and then the other two drives are storage. Um, you can put however many drives you want. You can configure RAID. Um, I don't have a RAID card right now, so there's no RAID in this. But there's just two hard drives. Um, I did add another network interface card too, so there's two uh, D-Link network interface cards. I'm not quite sure what they are. I, I, they're definitely not gigabit, but they work fine for what I use this for. I just use this to store all my schoolwork, um, videos, music, just important files that, if, that I wouldn't want to have to get screwed up. And then also this came in real handy when um, my dad accidentally downloaded a virus on this computer and it was running Windows XP at the time and um, so I just hooked that up, backed up all the stuff onto it and we formatted it and put Windows 7 on it. So, <sighs> yeah, um, I'm probably going to be doing some upgrades to this more in the future. I want to get a Norco uh, for you rack mount and transfer all the stuff in this to that. And I also want to upgrade because um, the amount of memory to one gigabyte of RAM because this uh, motherboard that's the maximum it supports because it's a Pentium 3 um, socket 370 motherboard. 
And I do want to get a RAID card for this and probably um, replace those two network interface cards with gigabit ones. So yeah, stay tuned for in a second for the uh, the installation and or not installation, but the configuration guide to uh, FreeNAS. Okay, so here we are in my room right now. I'm on my laptop, and um, so to connect to the actual FreeNAS server, what you do is you put in the um, web address, and for me it's HTTPS 192.168.1.106, and the port is a thousand for me. That's adjustable. Um, so you just go to your to the IP address of that particular server, and then you'll get up with this SSL certificate error, whatever. Understand the risks, add exception, confirm security exception. Then you come up with um, this box. When you first install it, it's just going to be login and you actually have to set a password and stuff. For me, I'm just going to put um, my actual pass, my password and my username. Hopefully I put in the right one. <laughs> then you come up with this screen. I've modified this a little bit so it's you might not exactly get exactly what this looks like but um, the first first on install you're gonna be this alert thing is gonna be beeping like crazy and it's gonna say you need to set a password so to do that you just go to account and then change um, password and then set a password um, but you can do that later so basically, um, I'm just going to go through some of the different features. Um, one of the things is is that you get this screen, which gives you a detailed report on um, what your interface traffic is, CPU usage, memory utilization, system load, processes, swap, disk space. Like as you can see, this disk is almost full. Um, and then this one is getting there. And yeah, um, you can either do it hourly, daily, weekly, monthly, or yearly. And there's a lot of these too. So settings tab, you have this, the protocol. This I set it to HTTPS because I like HTTPS. Um, the web GUI address, you can either bind it to a wildcard, your um, IPv4 address, local address, or um, you can use an IPv6 address. Um, the port, I set it to a thousand, language, time zone, and then the NTP servers, um, and then syslog server if you have one. Um, factory restore, you can do that too, so if you screw something up, you can just restore it to factory settings. Um, advanced, you get the enable console menu, um, that's what this is, I think, no, that's what this one is. Show console messages and footer. That's what this does. So it shows you the little bit of the console. You can set an MOTD and things like that. Um, apply service packs, firmware up updates, rebuild, cache, save. Um, email. Um, you can get it so that if there's a problem, it emails you. So that's what this is for. Um, and then if you have an actual SSL certificate, you can set SSL up with this. Um, system information, it just shows you the information, ah, 627 megabytes of memory. It just shows you the information, the uptime, that stuff. Um, account, you can um, change your password, look, add new groups and change groups, and actually add new users, and things like that. This is the admin user, and then the rest are just system users. Um, oh, accounts, my accounts, uh, groups, it's basically the same thing as it was here. System, um, the reporting, the settings, system information. You can set cron jobs too, so um, do that. rsync tasks, I forget what rsync does. I think what that does is it syncs um, it syncs this FreeNAS server with another FreeNAS server. Um, smart tests, you can run smart smart tests. Um, Sys CTLs, you can add those. And tuna tables, you can add those. Or tuna bowls, however you pronounce it. Um, network global configuration, um, that's just the host. You can do this, the host name. 
interfaces. Um, you can add your interfaces here, and you can either do this via these things or just with these checkboxes kind of thing. Link aggregation. What this does is, let me just add one, is you get failover, FEC, LACP, load balance, round robin, or none. Um, and you can add, basically it gets two, like if say if you want failover, it will take two of your um, network interface cards, and if one dies, then it uses the other one. It's just a redundancy thing. Load balancing, it splits the load between the two cards, almost like SLI, I guess. <laughs> um, so that balances the load. Static routes, you can add a static route. VLANs, you can do VLANs, and then your network summary. Which, yeah. So storage, you can use a periodic snapshots replication and then your volumes this is what you're gonna want um, so I've got two volumes here let me just storage it's not gonna click on it for me oh, never mind um, two volumes I got mount storage and mount storage 2 and those are my two network shares or my two hard drives um, you can then do the create volume select a hard drive select a volume name and so you can do either a UFS or ZFS file system and if you get both of them you can actually mirror or stripe the hard drives so almost like RAID but not really um, I haven't done that yet because as you can see they're completely different capacities if I had ones of the same capacities I would do that Cancel. Um, you can view all volumes import so if you have one, like if you have a hard drive that already has volume on it, you can do that. Auto import does basically the same thing. Sharing. Now you have the option here to share for three different five, three different operating systems. NFS shares are for Linux and BSD based systems and things like that, and Solaris and stuff. AFP is uh, more for um, Apple products. So like. Apple OS X, that kind of thing. CIFS shares are Samba shares for um, Windows systems. Um, it also will work on Linux. I use I use the CIFS shares for my Linux and this laptop. Um, but yeah, you have your two shares here. So when you go when you go to add share, um, you get the name, the comment, and then the path. The path, if you hit browse, you can choose a folder or an entire hard drive. These are actually two completely different hard drives. Um, export read only, browsable by network clients, you want that to be clicked, inherit permissions, um, that depends. Allow guest access, so you don't want that to be clicked. <laughs> hosts, and you can either ho allow hosts, like whitelists, or blacklist hosts, and then other parameters that you want to set. Um, Services, um, you have a bunch of different services here that you can, can control. Control services, if you click that, you can either turn on or off a service. Um, SSH, I of course want that on. You can do UPS, um, FTP, or TFTP, um, FTP, Dynamic DNS, CIFS, Active Directory, all sorts of them. Um, to configure each one of those services, you either click the little wrench, or you actually click the service below the control services. So say I want to control a FP server name, guest access, guest account, max connections, etc. CIF. Oops. Um, wait for that to load. This is a little slow right now. Uh, and then you can change that log level minimum. I want that to be normal. Unix tar set, um, all that good stuff. Hit OK. It's probably going to restart the service for me. Can you enable home directories? Yeah, yeah, reloading. And you can see what it did down there. Um, and yeah, I just basically do that for all of these. Um, sys display system processes, you can see what processes are running. Um, and then you can either do shut down or reboot. So that's pretty easy there. This is a free operating system too, which I really like. Um, it's very small. Um, 
And also, one thing that you can do that's really, really easy is if you, instead of, you can run the thing completely headless, and then do just 192.168.1.106. Just open up putty, like what I'm doing now. Open. Login as root. Put my password. And then there you go. You can do whatever you want. Um, it's really easy that way too. If you're gonna like do a vulnerable, because I will say this thing. If you enable Samba, you're gonna have to do a little bit of configuration to make it secure and things. Um, if you want me to do a video on that, I can. Um, that's just you'd have to download like Nexpus or ne um, Nessus vulnerability scanner. Do a scan on it and then see what you get. And um, come in here and do like CD Etsy. Oh wait. Let's see. Let's see. Um, CD local um, by samba.conf. Oh, wait, no, I don't have that in that directory. But you, you get what I mean. You have to go into your samba.conf file and. Um, yeah, smb.conf. No. By smb.conf. And then there. Yeah, it's. And edit. I think one of the things in here is you have to map it so there's no guest access or something like that. Um, but yeah, you got to configure it so it's secure and stuff, and then so nobody can like hack into it. Um, what you can do too is you can make it actually just local or in one of the network settings. You can make it. Where is that? You can make it so that you. Um, it's yeah. Here, name servers. You can actually make it so it's a public file server. So say you want like to offer like a file sharing service online, you can do that. Um, so yeah, that's uh, free NAS. Um, I'll put a link in the description to download it. The current version is version eight. Um, just burn it to a CD or something, and even you can actually get like a compact flash. Like I saw this, I think Max Arcade did this, um, where you get a compact flash card and an adapter for an IDE cable, and then just hook it into the IDE cable and um, run this operating system off the compact flash, and then use the re rest of your hard drive space instead of having like a huge like just a 20 gig hard drive or something for that you can use the smaller capacity and um, have it that way so then you can put more hard drives and get more storage um, you can put RAID in this too like if you want to add a RAID card you can do that um, there's a lot of good RAID cards but RAID cards are expensive <laughs> um, so yeah if you have any questions or anything just leave me a comment and don't forget to subscribe rate and comment